Okay, so Golang 1.24 introduces new generic type aliases, which just is a feature that lets you basically have aliases that can be generic. Right, that feature didn't exist before, although generics have been around for a few years already, I think since Golang 1.24. One eight. I mean, the reason for that is that pretty much a lot of technical complexity was involved to add generics to type aliases. So basically, a lot of refactoring and restructuring of the original code base of Golang has to be made to really support these generic type aliases. But nevertheless, in this video, we are going to quickly talk about this new feature of Golang 1.24. So it shouldn't be a really long video. All right, so you might already know that a type alias is just pretty much an alternative name for an already existing type, such that it doesn't create a new type out of it. Now these type aliases really enhance like code readability and abstraction without really introducing new types. And like I said before, generic type aliases are now introduced in Golang 1.24, which basically lets you, as the name suggests, just add a generic type parameter to your alias. Now these type aliases generally have a lot of use cases. For instance, type aliases are pretty much really valuable whenever you want to refactor a huge code base with a lot of dependencies. Now before Golang 1.24, it was already quite feasible to just create a type alias whenever you wanted to refactor something within a larger code base. And then whenever we've defined this type alias for the refactoring purposes, for example, we could just gradually replace the old code or the old references with the new type. And really with these type aliases and then this use case of refactoring a large code base, you wouldn't necessarily need or update every single use in your code base, right? You just could like gradually improve your code base to the new code instead. But this wasn't really possible whenever you got like a type that can be generic, right? Because aliases before Golang 1.24 couldn't be really generic until now. Now in here with this example, we are just going to look at a really simple use case of implementing a set in Golang. Now Golang doesn't really offer a built-in set for whatever reason, but the main reason is that you can pretty much build a set on your own by just leveraging a hash map or map in this case. Okay, let's just look at the Golang code before version 1.24 right, without these generic type aliases. So what we could do to support a set in Golang would be to just have a simple type alias called set, for instance, and then we can use as the key a string, and then maybe just for like performance reasons, we could use a empty struct definition, right? Now this empty struct is really powerful because it occupies zero byte of memory. Compared to a Boolean, this is the more optimal way of implementing a set in Golang. And what is really important to know here that these aliases that we've defined here are really pretty much compatible with the type it is assigned to itself, right? And there's also this type definition concept in Golang, right? Which we are not going to cover in this video because they are really different. So we are only covering aliases here for now. And what you could also do instead of like defining this alias, you could also, for instance, define a struct here, right? And this would like leverage pretty much encapsulation and all that like struct related stuff, right? But obviously this comes with a small overhead. And for the sake of this use case, I'm just going to keep things simple here and just demonstrate this kind of generic type alias with a set type alias instead of using a struct. Now, obviously we cannot like add functions now to this type alias, right? We always have to pass in the specific value of this set into the function instead of like using or leveraging functions or struct functions, right? So let's just implement two example functions here, which would be like the add function. So we say func add, and then we obviously need to set here, which in the end is a set, so this will be important to know. And then we pretty much have the value here. And now to save something in the map, we just say s at v, which is the key, right, for our map. And then we say an empty struct, right? And that's basically it for our add function. Now this is really rudimentary. You can just add a lot of things here, a lot of new functionality as well. I'm just going to keep things really simple. Let's add the contains function as well. Again, we need this set here, and then we need kind of the value which we are going to check inside of our set. And in the end, it just returns a boolean. And then we are going to basically check whether the value exists in our map in this case, or in our set. 
and then we are just going to return OK. Right, let's quickly demonstrate this example by just declaring here a fruits set. And then obviously we can just add a like apple, for instance, right, and a banana. And now we should have like a set with two values, right? We can obviously check this by just printing this to the console. And here we can leverage the contains function. All right, let's copy this and do the same thing with the banana. All right, so if we would run this code, things would work, obviously. And clearly, whenever we have like an orange here, right? For example, obviously, this would like return false, the contains function. All right, that's pretty cool. Things just worked, right? Which is really nice. But now the problem is actually whenever we want to, for instance, have here instead of a string, we want to have a number, right? And we want to kind of have here a generic type that basically defines the engineer or the developer, right? So that we have diverse sets in this case. So obviously we do not really want to only support strings for our sets. We would also like to support for instance, numbers, right, as a really simplified example. Now, before Golang 1.24, this wouldn't be possible, right, because we cannot really define a generic type parameter for our type alias here. Now, obviously, before Golang 1.24, you could just, for instance, say some generic and then int, right, just define the generic type parameter whenever you want to have an alias out of it. But you couldn't really define the generic type here. Now, this is now possible with Golang 1.24. Now, instead of having a string here, right, a really non-generic type, we could just say T, right, and then we define the generic type in here and we say comparable. Now, this now shows me some errors because I don't have the language server protocol for Golang 1.24, but we can just ignore this error here in this line. Now this comparable interface, it is really an interface, pretty much is just a constraint for our generic type parameter, which in the end just lets us compare values with a double equal or not equal. All right, so hopefully this was clear here. Now obviously you could just add your own type parameter or your own constraint, right? So what you could do is for instance, just declare another, for instance, we say any, right? And then we have like, two generic type parameters, right? You are not really constrained to only using one here. And obviously you can just use your own constraint instead of using comparable, right? So let's just adapt these two functions here. So what we can do is just say T comparable, and then we basically define the generic type parameter for our set here. Then obviously we need to kind of change instead of using string, we need to use T here as well, right? So now the issue is fixed in this Function. So let's do the same thing for our contains. So we have a generic type parameter and then we say t and instead of using string we use t again. Now in our main function we just have to define the type parameter here which is a string, right? And now things should just work. So if we would run this with golang 1.24 things will work. However, when we now define like integer instead of string obviously this will give us an error, right? Because obviously Apple is not an integer. And this way we can really easily define generic type parameters for our type aliases. All right, so I think these type aliases and specifically now these generic type aliases are pretty helpful and pretty awesome for a few situations. Oh, and also Golang 1.24 introduces a new OS.root type, which is a security enhancement. And I've already made a video about that as well. So feel free to check out this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye-bye.